What's up, YouTube? Uh, so today we're going to be talking about the difference between square DQO tandem breaker types. Uh, I'm installing a generator at the house, and I need to make room in my box for uh, an, uh, the generator circuit. I'm going to use this 40 amp for the generator circuit. Um, but the box is full, so I need to move a couple of a single bre single pole breakers to tandem breakers so that I can fit the 40 amp in where the 40 amp is supposed to go. Um, and I've been having some issues trying to or getting the right breakers. So I'm going to talk about the two different kinds of square D QO breakers, why they're different, what the differences are. Um, I'll pull up some diagrams and show you how they fit into the different boxes. But to start out, um, these are your two different types of breakers. Don't worry about the fact that this one's 20 and this one's 15. Um, I needed a 15, and when I bought this one, the 20s were... I don't know, three or four bucks cheaper, so I just bought that. But So the, the 15 of this breaker would be exactly the same. So the, the difference is, is the back. You see that? So this one on the left has a hook, and this one on the right has a set of prongs. So this one right here on the left, this is what Square D calls a Square D QOT breaker. It's quick attachment. Um, and this hooks into your box and for a tandem breaker slot and they fit in very specific tandem breaker slots in your box. Your box will be marked for them um, and it, what it's meant to do is limit the number of circuits that you can put in your box. This is the newer style of breaker. This one on the left here, this is just your square D QO breaker. So when you're ordering breakers, if you see QOT, it's this one. If you see just QO, it's this one. Um, and this one will fit anywhere in a square D QO load center that a single pole breaker will. So my box is older. Um, I don't know when it was installed. I bought the house with the box, but it won't take these breakers. So I needed to buy these breakers. So I just wanted to bring you in the house um, and actually show you how these things are installed. So um, you'll see that these tandem breakers can be anywhere in the box. Um, and again, these are the non QOT ones, so they don't have the hook. Um, so this is your normal single breaker right here. It's just one circuit and then these are tandem So each one of these is its own circuit So it takes the place of one of these and gives you an additional circuit by making this two circuits So we're back in the house now uh, in the garage We looked at the two different types of square DQO tandem breakers the one that has just the jaw and the one that has the hook on it uh, in the house we looked at the difference between a single throw breaker and a tandem breaker and how the tandem breaker helps add circuits to your box. So now we're going to look at how you can tell uh, which one you're supposed to use and then why they're different. Why, why did Square D QO change the different types of breakers that you can put in your box? So getting into it, the way that you can tell whether you have to buy the QOT or non-QOT breaker is this hole in the mounting rail here. So this, they're, they're in your box, there's this bus bar connector and then you have this mounting rail. So you hook it, you hook your breaker onto the mounting rail and then you snap it into place onto the bus bar. In boxes that have a slot in the mounting rail, you can use the QOT breakers. Uh, that slot in the rail is actually for the hook on the breaker and then you can plug in um, the plug on jaw into the bus bar connector. So the plug on jaw on these two breakers is exactly the same. It's the hook and the jaws on the rail that are different. So if you don't have this notch, like just this side here, then you need the non-QOT breakers. And it matters because um, as of when I'm filming this, so January of 2022, these are about 70 bucks a piece, wherever you're looking, if you're looking for a tandem breaker, and these are 23, 25 bucks a piece if you're looking for a breaker. Uh, don't worry about the fact that this says standard circuit breaker over here. Remember that when we were talking in the garage that the um, non-QOT tandem breaker takes the place of just a standard circuit breaker. So wherever a standard circuit breaker goes, a non-QOT tandem breaker can go. So just to recap, um, if you have this little notch here, you need the, you can you can install the QOT breakers. Uh, if you don't have a little notch, you need to get the non-QOT breakers that have the jaws. So we've talked about the different kinds of tandem breakers. Uh, I went over how the tandem breakers look in a box, and then we went over how to tell which one you're supposed to use in your box or which one you need to use in your square DQO load center. Uh, so now let's talk about why the change. So uh, what you're seeing on the screen is a map of the state adoptions of the National Electric Code. 
So the National Electric Code, that's what NEC stands for, is a widely accepted code governing electrical installations. Uh, and the, the one that we care about is the 2008 NEC. So in 2008, the NEC introduced the term circuit total limiting. So circuit total limiting is used to describe uh, load centers that physically restrict the number of circuits that you can have in a box. So what that means for us is um, Square DQO only puts a certain number of those notches where you can fit the QOT breakers in their newer boxes so that they are physically limiting the number of circuits that you can have in a box. They want to make sure that you can't put tandem breakers in, you know, if it's a 30 slot box, you can't put tandem breakers in all 30 slots. You can only put tandem breakers in a certain number. Uh, and it has to do with a perceived safety issue. Um, so you, it, people were putting tandem breakers in every slot in their box and overloading it, and it was a fire hazard. So that's why they're different. So that was in, instituted in 2008. So if you have a box that's pre-2008, you need to buy the breakers, um, buy the non-QOT breakers that don't have the hook. They won't have slots for the QOT breakers. So that's it for today. Uh, if this video helped you out, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting out lots more DIY content. Uh, if you've got a comment or question about what we went over today, um, just throw it in the comment section. If you like this electrical stuff, let me know. I am wiring a generator up to the house, so I'll probably do a series on that. Um, yeah, if, you, if there's anything else you'd like to see, just let me know. Thanks. Have a good day.